What's going on there, folks? It is your Earthmaster here on this beautiful Friday evening, March 25th, 2022 is a date, uh, about 8.01 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 2.8 earthquake striking in the area of, uh, looks like the Costa Rica area. They have seen uh, quite a bit of swarming and earthquake movement down there over the last 24 hours. Let's get right into it. Let's take a look at the latest info here on the USGS map. Kind of want to pinpoint a couple earthquakes of uh, notable um, size here for the uh, California area. We're starting to see a little bit of movement here. Interior, Northern California, right along a fault system here. Kind of runs west here, uh, down through the western edge of the Sacramento and the San Joaquin Valley in California. It's called the Great Valley Fault Zone. We've seen some earthquake activity ramp up there today around the Williams area at a 2.3. And then uh, about an hour or so later, it looks like one hour to the T, we had a 3.7 strike. Now, these are very shallow earthquakes, and they're striking oh, about uh, three to five miles west of Williams on the Great Valley Fault Thrust. Now, this fault system is right here on the map. You can see that uh, clear as day stretches up here into portions of uh, Redding down through the west side of the valley. The Great Valley Fault Zone is a thrust fault. Uh, the accumulated stress rate, the slip rate, is only about 0.2 mm per year. So there's not a lot of buildup on here. Uh, but I can't say the last time that this area has seen a sizable earthquake. Great Valley Thrust Fault System stretches all the way down into this area, like I mentioned, into Southern California. So a little bit of activity ramping up here. Going to keep a close eye on it. 3.7 was felt over the area. Let's go ahead and check out a little specifics of where it was felt here in Northern California. Looks like Yuba City, uh, Grass Valley area, and specifically around Calusa County. Uh, Williams uh, noting the light earthquake activity uh, in that region. It, it did kind of come in as a 3.3. Uh, and then it got upgraded to a 3.8 and then now downgraded to a 3.7. So it looks like that has uh, been the official review at uh, negative depth. So this is really shallow earthquake activity. Remember, it's a thrust fault system. So um, who knows? Who knows when the last major rupture was on this thrust fault? And it's pretty extensive. Uh, so just uh, we got to watch stuff like this. You know, we got these old fault systems. Uh, that we really don't know too much about. We always think about the San Andreas Fault or the Calaveras or the Hayward Fault, uh, but these these ancient fault systems here can produce some large earthquakes, so we gotta be uh, very aware of what's going on there. Also up above Chico, we had a 2.0. So a little line of activity. You can see that movement stretching up here from the Great Valley Thrust area um, up to the uh, Lake Almanor region. It looks like just south of Chester where they've seen a 2.1 on the east shore. Some activity up here around Pyramid Lake as well with a 2.0. And a little bit of activity this morning around the Petrolia area. This one, a deep earthquake into the Cascadia subduction zone, a 2.3 at 25.9 kilometers. Uh, some movement also inland, interior Oregon. So you were starting to notice a little trend here. Um, is it coincidence or is this all pointing towards something possibly bigger like the Cascadia going? Uh, Cascadia has been ramping up with trimmer activity. Uh, lack of and and whatnot here. It's been 222 years since uh, uh, No, I take that back 322 years since we had a full rupture along the Cascadia So uh, it's building that thing will pop off a 9.0 earthquake and devastate the entire coastline of Oregon Washington and Northern California That's a fact that is not make-believe. It's not a fairy tale. It's a fact that uh, That's gonna happen the matter of when it's going to happen is a uh, is a, the big question right now. But each day we move forward, it's that much closer. Lakeview, Oregon, seen some activity into the mountain region. Uh, a couple small microquakes and also up here around the Paulina Mountains. It looks like right underneath the Newberry Crater. Now this is volcanic. This is a volcano. Look at that activity there. About 10 earthquakes happening there at Newberry Volcano. We haven't seen too much movement here in this area. Um, I was hoping to get up there 
when I went to check out uh, Mount St. Helens here a couple months ago, but man, there was just too much snow up here. Wanted really wanted to see this volcano. It's got a huge area of pumice rock uh, in this area, but uh, man, look at that. Some very shallow earthquake activity, some negative uh, negative depths, and uh, looks like down to about 0.8 kilometers. So very shallow movement here at the volcano, the Newberry volcano. Let's go ahead and check out real quick on the trimmer map uh, any specifics about this uh, volcanic uh, activity here. This here is the Newberry volcano. Um, it's still at the green level, meaning uh, the advisory level. We haven't seen any significant changes, but uh, something to keep an eye on, right? So we're looking at uh, last two hours of earthquake activity here, seeing a pretty good swarm. Let's go ahead and check out the late latest uh, seismograph station here at Central Pumas Cone. Oh, don't you dare. Don't you dare even try to hide this. Stand by for just a second. Let me see if I can get this keyed up. Here we go. Uh, so there's one very distinct earthquake there on the map. Let's check out the previous day and uh, see what we got. Definitely some earthquake activity ramping up there at the Newberry. This one looks a little bit stronger. This one here is at the... See, this is from yesterday. That's yesterday's activity. So looking at today's activity, some earthquake activity there as well, but where's all the small microquakes within the last couple hours? So we're going back the last two hours, where are they? They're not even showing up. So that means these other earthquakes are much bigger than these uh, small magnitudes that they're showing. There's a 1.2 at 0.439 UTC time. 0439, uh, let's see here, let's go back, 0439? Hold on a second here. Zero four thirty nine, zero four forty three, zero four twenty eight. so a lot within that time frame. The uh, UTC time frame currently is, uh, let me double check here and see what it is on this station, 0, 03. But in the 26, right? The 26. Um, wow. Okay, so some of this activity is older, but they are. Uh, it's weird. They're showing it as movement within the last couple hours, right? I mean, let me double check and verify this here. Yeah, last two hours, right there. So not for sure, maybe they just added it on, but that's a little on the weird side. See? Yeah, they just, that's from yesterday, 0439, roughly about this time last night, but it's just been added up onto the uh, the charts here, up onto the, uh, for the public to see and witness over the last two hours. So that's a little on the odd side, but uh, that's, a, that's some good swarming taking place there. We're gonna watch that pretty closely at the uh, Newberry Volcano in Oregon. That's all we need. we got Mount St. Helens uh, showing swarms. we got Three Sisters showing a bulge. There's uh, a lot of activity striking up there. Okay, so let's go north here, um, north of this region. Mount Hood up here still showing a little bit of activity, seismic activity at the base of the volcano. Some microquakes as well within that region. Let's go ahead and check out the volcanic seismicity at Mount Hood from the PNSN. The thing is, they can they can show earthquakes on here. It looks like some activity pick, kicking up there as well. Uh, but these seismograph stations, that's kind of what I revert to when it comes to looking at the truth. Uh, because the seismographs, they can hide them somewhat and, and make them unaccessible. But uh, these things kind of tell the telltale truth out here. Wow, uh, not for sure what all that is. That is a huge mess of... Uh, of something there at Mount Hood. Let me check out a different uh, seismograph here. This one a little bit closer to the activity in the Mount Hood region, Timberline, Oregon. Let's go back to previous day to get a little bit more better, broader view of the scope of things here. And uh, man, there's just some weird activity popping up there at that volcano as well. Uh, normally, Earthquake activity in general is going to be a small spike, similar to what we've seen there on the Newberry volcano. 
But uh, this other activity, I'm not for sure what's going on with that. It's a little on the odd side. Uh, check out this one, Mount Hood Meadows area. Oh, let's see here. There's some of the earthquake activity right there. That's well defined. This one looks a little bit more tuned, I believe, but still, it's just some weird signal showing up on the uh, on the Mount Hood station. Crazy. Uh, Mount St. Helens, some movement up there as well, up through Mount Rainier. Look at this. We're seeing a broader scope of earthquake activity well inland. Of course, you remember we had a swarm of activity here uh, last night, I believe, or a couple nights ago. Go to the all magnitudes, uh, seven days all magnitudes. There we go. Yeah, we had about uh, 21 earthquakes or so in the region of uh, northern Nevada around the Sheldon National or Sheldon Contiguous Study Area. Uh, I know the National Antelope uh, Refuge is out here somewhere. I remember visiting the region uh, a few years ago to investigate a earthquake swarm that was ongoing here, but this is well north of that region. But a uh, little strange activity kicking up here. Now we got volcanoes that have seen really no activity at all, uh, such as the Newberry volcano now showing uh, a swarm. Very shallow swarm at that. So uh, something out here brewing big time along the west coast. Uh, you know, including the Great Valley Thrust Zone. So I think this, I think west coast out here, man, we're we're about ready to pop. Uh, let's see, eastern Sierra Nevada, somewhat quiet down here. We're seeing, seeing a return of swarming around the Antelope, Antelope Valley area. A couple twos further down south. Still just a couple small microquakes. I say a couple because most of the time the numbers are a little bit larger. Uh, this one showing a little bit more activity than yesterday. Yesterday was pretty well. Uh, I'm thinking about half of this amount of earthquake activity. Uh, got a little bit of swarming over here in, a, uh, in the Thousand Palms area. Looks like uh, some earthquakes there in the small microquake range. A swarm of them, about six, at uh, between two to five kilometers below surface. So a couple uh, interesting areas here along the west coast we're taking note of. Uh, some further movement around the Alamo, Nevada area, and some activity stretching up into the uh, looks like southern Wyoming. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone thumbnails here real quick. Uh, Surprise, this one's not popping off, right? If we're going to get volcanoes popping off, it might as well be Yellowstone. Um, I don't see a whole lot going on there. I don't see any swarms. Everything looks pretty calm on the seismographs, uh, on, at least on those stations there. Uh, Texas, still seeing a rumbling or two out there of not thunder, but earthquakes around the Pecos, Texas, Guadalupe Peak area. This area had a 4.8 earthquake, right? Leave us a 4.8. Let's double check that. 4.6. All right. Looks like it got downgraded um, there a couple days ago. Since then, we've seen a swarm of movement. Um, it's still kind of continuing here over the last 24 hours. New Madrid zone. Only two earthquakes on the map here. This is earlier this morning, a 2.4 and a 1.5. No subsequent activity kicking up there yet. Uh, South America region looking pretty quiet there, folks. Not a whole lot going on. The Big Island. Shown a 2.4 in the southeast region of the Big Island of Hawaii. Mauna Loa also had a 2.1 this morning. And the uh, Indian Lap, Indian Lap, uh, what do we got here? Jagger Seamount. Looks like it's closer to the Jagger Seamount here with this 2. Point, uh, actually, what is this? Yeah, 2. Point, uh, hold on a second here. 3.4? Because before that was a 2.4. Is there another earthquake underneath there? No. It's kind of weird. So the Indianapolis Seamount and the Jagger Seamount, or uh, look at all these Seamounts underneath here. That's crazy. Uh, this one's pretty deep, 37.7 kilometers there. We're well off the coast into that Seamount region. Uh, 4.9 around the Japan area, northwestern part of the Philippine Plate here. Some activity throughout the uh, Papua New Guinea and the uh, Tonga region as well. No major movement over here in this area. We're still watching the... Uh, uh, the Azores area, right? I did add a station up onto the live stream to monitor the uh, activity happening on the uh, volcanic island here. Not showing up here on the USGS map, but there's a swarm of over 2,000 earthquakes on the island. 
and uh, they're evacuating folks and thinking this thing may be uh, getting ready to pop. But on the live stream, we do have the uh, have a seismograph station monitoring the earthquake activity there. So we'll look for that uh, during the live stream, which is uh, of course 24/7. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I don't believe we have too much going on up here in Canada, but you never know. Things change left and right. Still seeing a little bit of movement up here, northern end of the Cascadia. Looks like that's where the recent quake is in the purple circle, gel, uh, just off the coast of Port Alice, BC. 2.1 at 23 kilometers there into the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, tremor map, we didn't check that. I think I skipped over it, but it shows zero. So we're back to zero for, oh man, about been about four days or five days or so now of no trimmer once again after a couple days of uptick so I don't I don't know kind of looking at this movement here of the inland areas of northern California the Great Valley thrust zone uh, now some very shallow earthquake up along the edges here a little bit closer inland some older geology within the structure starting to see a lot of uh, a lot of inland movement. That's making me think here that there's something, something here building up pretty, uh, pretty hard along the west coast. Uh, when we see this earthquake activity right here, something's uh, not giving over here to the west. So we got to watch that pretty closely into the uh, region of northern California northward, and that uh, does cover the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, checking out the solar weather. We'll bring these folks up here real quick. We did have uh, last night an M flare pop off. An M1.1 looks like they have raised up the uh, potential for a G1 a solar storm coming up on the 27th. The three-day geomagnetic forecast calls for that. The solar flaring possibility uh, looks kind of low, but I think we are should be looking at possibility of another M flare kicking off from these sunspots. They're growing pretty rapidly. 2976, 2975 as well. The M flare popped off from 2974 down here. Well, these ones are getting massive. Uh, they're growing pretty... Uh, pretty strong and pretty fast they're huge so we've got to watch these over the next couple days as well all right folks uh let me show you guys the um station there that i'm kind of monitoring in the region hold on a second here of the uh a source area that's going to be this station. Hold on a second here. It's going to be this station right here. Let me bring my hand up here. Right here. That's the station monitoring uh, the activity there on the island over in that region of the world. I got quite a few stations ki uh, kicked up. kind of want to show you guys Barrett as well. I may, may leave Barrett, which is the Southern California station, up on the map. Stand by for one second as we get this pulled up. That's going to be Hawaii. So coming up around the bend here. Um, ch -ch -ch, come on, come on. There we go. This here is in Southern California. Getting some spikes of earthquake activity on that station. It's not really showing up on the USGS map, but those are indeed earthquakes there. Uh, about northeast of San Diego. So uh, definitely seen some earthquake activity ramp up there. So uh, once again, we got uh, Australia, Petrolia, Northern California, Azores, uh, Japan, and um, Hawaii all being monitored on the 24 7 live earthquake channel so don't forget to go over and check it out and uh, make sure you like and subscribe while you're here if you're watching this video latest earthquake there 2.0 looks like nevada so west coast kind of ramping up here folks we will keep you guys updated and uh notified if anything changes drastically till then enjoy your friday evening stay safe out there and uh we'll chat you guys tomorrow sometime have a good night